the afternoon session. My name is Jared Maggio. I'm a PhD student in environmental engineering. And um, so I'll be presenting today on a grant that myself, uh, Kurt Patterson, who's no longer at the university, uh, Kelly Wellen, who's a master's student, and then um, some undergrads who worked on. We wrote a grant about two years ago for uh, EPA called uh, People, Prosperity, and the Planet. And it's supposed to be, uh, they fund projects who uh, deal with um, environmental problems and sustainability. We're interested in looking at uh, cook stoves and cook stove problems. And so we'll be presenting on the lab that we kind of constructed. Um, and uh, these are my other uh, co-presenters. Uh, well, that aren't here, but most of them have already graduated, but they were seniors last year and worked on this project for their senior design. Um, so currently, so the way, the way we uh, developed this project was to see how external influences, uh, other than like cook stoves, could influence the amount of emissions and health problems. And so we wanted to construct a laboratory. But currently, uh, the Global Alliance, they're kind of like the overseers of all cook stove projects globally. They have this system that they're trying to put forth, which is a tier system. And so stoves get rated on uh, tier zero, tier one, two, two, two three, four. And um, the way they're rated is looking at particulate matter and carbon monoxide emissions um, from a water boiling test, which basically that's, um, you have your cook stove that you're trying to test to see how, how good it is. You raise a pot of water up to boil, uh, you simmer it, and then you, uh, and then you shut it off. And so there's some problems with that because these are you know, being sold as like, you know, tier four is the, you know, the greatest thing. And these are, these are so good, but um, you know, these are under laboratory settings in a very controlled environment. And they don't always operate like that in real life. And so we want to propose a different way of testing stoves that reflect real world setting rather than a laboratory setting. And so that's what Kitchen 2.0 is. It's a you know, reconstructed house. Outside of the house is a big tarp that goes over. We control the amount of airflow that comes in and out so we can kind of replicate um, wind or environmental conditions. Uh, we can control humidity and temperature. And we also have a whole uh, suite of um, uh, instrumentation, which is far more than you can actually have in the field. Uh, you know, redundancy and particulate monitors, uh, aerodynamic particle sizers, um, and then we're, we're one of the first groups to look at uh, organic carbon and elemental carbon um, in, the, in what's produced, which is important in um, atmospheric impacts. And so this is the setup of the laboratory inside. Um, that's the house, and then this is the general layout. Um, so here's some results um, from our preliminary testing this uh, last year. And so we looked at three different stoves. Three stone, which is like an open hearth, which most people cook on, and produces a lot of emissions. And these are two very common improved stoves um, that are based off of a rocket stove design, which is common. Uh, people know that in the developing world. And so this is the EnviroFit, and this is the stove tech. And so we kind of found something pretty interesting is, you know, ventilation. So here is um, your percent improvements of uh, the amount of particulate matter, which is small particles, and carbon monoxide, which are uh, two of the biggest health hazards that are looked at, uh, health indicators. So if you're producing a lot of these, they're, that's pretty bad for you. Um, so the three stone, which is like the basic uh, hearth that most people have, if you just change the ventilation, you can improve it by you know, 50 to 70%. However, if you introduce the proof stove, which is the engineering solution, um, in a closed off house, so the baseline is a closed uh, three stone fire. If you just introduce an improved stove, you actually might make the uh, air quality worse in people's homes. And our theory behind that is that there's, these are designed to be very restrictive in the amount of air that through, and there's, there's not enough air to actually combust um, the wood uh, properly. And so you actually increase the amount of emissions in a closed off home. But if you combine you know, ventilation with an improved stove, there's a lot, uh, there's a lot more benefit. Um, so I thought it was funny that I, I, I labeled 
this slide. How much is enough? Because I thought this was the busiest slide that maybe you've ever seen. And I apologize for that. Uh, so apparently, how much is enough? There's, there's not enough. And so, in my opinion. But uh, so what I mean by that, how much is enough? Is is this slide here? I want you to focus on first. Is looking at uh, particular matter, dosage, uh, log scale. Uh, against just the relative risk. So, how likely are you to get, um, you know, cardiopulmonary, cardiovascular, or a heart disease if you're if you're breathing in this much smoke? And so, most studies are done with looking at um, active smokers. So, all these X's look at active smoking. And then the other studies, um, well, women's cancer, uh, women's health initiative, and American Cancer are here. And so, we use this line as our basis and then plotted our uh, data points along here. So we know the amount of particulate matter, but the problem is we don't know the relative risk that's associated. And so there's a question right now is, you know, how much is enough? So we're reducing the amount of air pollution in people's homes, but is it enough to actually find health benefits? And there's a lack of study and research uh, on that. And that's one thing that needs to be improved in, the, in this field. Um, but we, we kind of took this, this graph and extrapolated it to potentially how many lives could be saved uh, because you have a baseline about 4 million people die every year from poor air quality in developing countries. And that's usually because of uh, acute respiratory infections. And so according to our data, you know, if you uh, go from like a closed three stone, which is the the stove that most people use, and bring in an improved stove, you know, there's potential of actually making it worse and creating more debt. So, you know, an engineering solution is not always the answer, and it needs to be looked at uh, more closely. Um, however, if you combine, you know, ventilation and an improved stove, you know, every year we could be, you know, there's potential of saving you know, three or forty thousand people. So uh, you know, this, this conference is supposed to be thinking about sustainability, and so I wanted to ask, you know, this is more of a discussion uh, for us, is uh, people who are interested in, in doing improved stove, stove, stove projects, is uh, this the sustainable solution? And there's some problems with improved stoves, uh, which is very common in the literature, is, you know, stoves are often ignored or they're coupled, and so what you see as health improvements in the lab is not necessarily what you get in the field. So is this the best uh, solution? And you know, for me, uh, I think sometimes, but not always. And so groups will come to me, you know, some engineers will have orders projects and will talk to me about stoves and they want me to talk about just how I design, what you design is better. And it has a lot to do with your community. And so there's some successes out there and so I'm not against improved stoves. Um, the Berkeley Darf Darfur stove is one of those examples where it really worked extremely well for the situation. And so in all these um, uh, camps in Darfur, you know, the, the women are out collecting wood in the bush where there's wars going on. And so the more often they have to go out, the more in danger they are. And so this stove does a really good job at reducing the amount of fuel needed. So therefore, they're going out into the forest less often and, and they're at the less risk. And so for this situation, by creating a stove that really reduces the amount of fuel necessary, um, had a big impact on this community. This has been one of the more recent successes in improved stove products. Um, so some takeaway messages. Um, Engineer solutions do not always work as we plan. And so you need to you know, know your community really well before you start a stove project. And uh, think critically about you know, what, is, you know, what is the most appropriate technology, appropriate solution. It might not be an engineering solution, even though you're engineers. We might look at things. I, I feel like engineers are kind of like a, the analogy with uh, a hammer. If you have a hammer in your hand, all you see is nails. Um, and, and sometimes the engineering solution is not always the right answer, but sometimes it is. Um, from our lab research, environmental conditions matter as much as the stove. So 
So if you can create you know, better ventilation in these people's houses, or you know, maybe it's something they already do, maybe an improved stove that reduces the dirt quality isn't necessary uh, because a lot of the smoke is already maybe being left. Uh, Panama, they often cook outside, for example, and these, these shelters that are mostly open, it's maybe it's not as, it's important to maybe take a stove design that reduces um, fuel use, but maybe it doesn't matter as much if it produces uh, indoor air pollution. Uh, and so this is another discussion, is, is the water boiling test that Global Alliance is creating this tier system, is this the best way to move forward with rating these stoves and getting them disseminated? Because funding agencies can see like, oh, this is a tier four stove, it said so in the laboratory, I'm gonna put all this money towards this, even though it might not be the right solution. And so it, it, it might create some bias and some, some funding situations that maybe is not, uh, they're not appropriate. Uh, so future research, I think for our lab, we'd like to do a lot more, a lot more stove testing, uh, get some different stoves involved, and see if we can replicate the data. Um, in order to do that, I think the best thing is to move it out of the, um, out of academia, and partner with an organization like Global Alliance, who is a third party testing stoves, and it removes any uh, conflict of interest that might arise where stoves are being tested by uh, individual groups. And um, also another important area in this in this uh, uh, in this line of work with improved stoves is partner with epidemiologists and, and help create this link you know, with long-term projects. Saying, so, okay, if a stove's introduced in this community, what is it actually doing to help? Um, then I'd like to um, acknowledge uh, my advisor, Kirk Patterson, uh, the rest of the team that worked on this, um, and then EPA and NSF for uh, funding the project. And of course, the communities uh, that I've worked in in Tanzania. Reference slide and take questions. So how many more minutes do I have? Eight minutes? Yeah, plenty of time. Okay, so so I also want to mention uh, this global survey. This is also part of our project, and we recruited uh, Atlas Institute students and um, uh, Peace Corps students. We're doing surveys in all these different communities, and we'd like to make this more of like an application. You can do it on your phone and get information about stoves and what fuels people use and start creating a global database of this information. And so this might have been something you've already heard about the last year when we recruited some of you. So I just wanted to mention this is some of the results from that we can talk about that. But I'll open up to questions. So you mentioned the ventilation uh, part of the stove system. Mm -hmm. um, are there proposals on how that could be? Is, is that something that would require engineering in the house, or is that that could be you know, designed with the stove? Or, or can you elaborate on that? Right. So I think from our standpoint, um, you know, it's, it's difficult to get people to, to, to bring the solution and have them design that bowling differently. Um, but I think it needs to be incorporated. If people are already adopting stoves, it's a no-brainer to also incorporate this kind of education um, with that. And you saw that you saw that even though you uh, bring in an improved stove, it's not going to improve the air quality. If it does, it's not going to improve the air quality as much as if you also incorporate ventilation. And so I think there's a couple of stove projects, this, you know, the, the idea of increasing ventilation. Um, but also, if, if you're not doing a stove project, um, just creating more awareness campaigns about this ventilation idea anyways. And I don't think it would occur to do that. And even if people couldn't buy the, the appropriate technology to improve stove, um, there's things that they can do to improve their quality if they wanted to. And um, I think one of the things I, I try to push is, is this kind of you know, self-designed solutions rather than us coming in creating something, you know, creating awareness out there and then having them change it. You know, um, yeah, that's your question. Yeah, I was just wondering, precisely because of um, how, you know, in, in some areas, uh, a lack of ventilation you know, 
know, may have the lead time for a show, like five right. minutes or But you go to Nepal and you know out here in the mountains it's cold. People right. don't have the, the, the cold burning cook stoves that produce a lot of carbon dioxide and uh, it's tough for them to incorporate very much because it's because of the climate. Right. So is this would that be something to sort of focus engineering thinking into or or is that a completely different um, yeah, that's that's something we look at more is these different chimney designs and looking appropriate to certain areas and looking at engineering designs for those. Other questions? in an unbiased way as I can. Of course, every researcher, even the questions that you ask, you're asking that because you're interested in it. So there's already some sort of bias. But you try to remove that and looking at things as objectively, especially when you're when you're looking at the data and saying, okay, yeah, I did think, you know, proof stoves, I mean, that, that's the, the whole world, the, the, the whole word indicates you know, that these are better, they're improved, right? But, um, you know, and, and that's the problem with with these organizations and these companies testing their own stoves is that maybe they're less likely to admit that their stove isn't as good as just an open three stone fire with all this engineering and construction and, um, and design and working with communities has taken place that it's really not much better. And so that's why I really want to promote a third party testing facility. I think that's important in, in monitoring the valuation of the improved cook stove at the moment. Is your kitchen up here still running? What's that? Is your kitchen up here still running? No, so we were using a space in the q and Research Center up by the airport, and uh, they have different engines coming in. And so right now, the whole research team has kind of left, and I'm getting ready to leave. That's why I want to kind of push this more on a private sector rather than academic. Uh, there's been talk about, I just saw the presentation earlier, on Tech Bucket 2. Uh, people talk about creating more research facility out of the airport on these kind of projects, on D80 type projects, and 